Hi, my name is Mauro. I'm here to talk to, talk to speak for you about uh, reliability, availability, and serviceability inside the Linux kernel. Uh, so uh, I will start explaining a little bit about what that kind of thing really means, and uh, then I will go, go further into details on how this is being done right now on the kernel, and uh, what we are doing on user space also to provide a better support for high availability on Linux. Uh, this concept were, what's happening? Oh, maybe some cable issues here. Okay, well, uh, this kind of features uh, started uh, with IBM when they uh, decided to create a very robust mainframe. So they created the concept of high availability and they uh, decided to implement a series of measures in order to be able to uh, evaluate between one system and another system what system is a better uh, uh, target for uh, high availability. So uh, the first concept is related to re uh, reliability, which is basically the probability that a system will produce a correct result. So it will provide a correct output uh, outside that system. And uh, they created a measure called mean time between fails, which basically measures how much, how much time the system is running without having any problems. Uh, and uh, what we should do when we want to improve it is to uh, provide mechanisms to detect and to avoid and to help on repairing those faults. Uh, the second concept is related to the availability of the system, which is the probability that the system will be operational for a given time. Uh, it generally measures a percentage of downtime for uh, a period of time where you are measuring that, uh, av that availability. So, for example, we call three nines when the system is unavailable for 3.65 uh, days unavailable per year. We may measure for months, for hour. We generally use for by year, it's, it's not the usual way of displaying this kind of measures. Five nines is about 50 minutes of downtime per year. Uh, of course, if I can detect the hardware and correct the, those failures, I will increase the availability of the system. And the last concept is related with serviceability or maintainability, which means uh, the time uh, that I will take, I will need to repair uh, that system. So I generally measure the mean time between two consecutive repairs. Of course, if I have a, a, a better uh, support, I will have a, a, the system will be uh, more uh, serviceable. Well, there are several kinds of uh, ways to improve the availability of the system. I can use hardware measures, I can use software measures, and, and I can use service measures uh, in order to improve the system. For example, if I'm talking about CPU, uh, I can detect errors inside the caches, inside the, the buses, inside the, the uh, processing itself, processing block. Uh, I can, in case of memory, detect memory errors. Uh, on storage, I can may add checksums on both the same things. So there are several methods, that, that several uh, ways of improving the hardware by adding uh, checksums and things like that. I can also uh, improve uh, the high availability of a system by uh, improving the support from the IT team or from my vendor. Uh, one thing that I've been using right now is to create virtual machines. So if the physical machine crashes, I can move a virtual machine to another machi physical machine, and the service will be available. 
And the most important thing that, that is the focus of the rest of this uh, talk is that I can use predictive analysis, I can detect in advance before my hardware actually crashes, and then I can take some measures uh, in a preventive way in order to make my system more available over time. Uh, so the hardware needs to provide uh, some way to detect and correct those errors and to detect when the components are being degraded. And of course, I need to have user space tools that allows me to analyze those data information that are provided by the hardware in order for me to improve the system and to make preventive uh, stops when my service won't be affected. Well, in the case of the Linux kernel, uh, since the beginning, we have some sorts of measures to uh, work on high availability. The first ones probably are on the storage blocks, the storage layer, the block layer, that has CRCs and other measures that uh, allows to improve the availability of my uh, store systems. Uh, but in the rec recent days, we are starting to add more things. Uh, probably the, f the most important one that happened uh, uh, on kernel 2.6.32 were the addition of the machine check architecture, MCA. Uh, this is something that uh, Intel uh, started on providing on Pentium 4 machines. Uh, and uh, uh, it uh, has some blocks inside the CPU that detects errors uh, on the CPU and on the components that CPU, CPU talks directly. Uh, it can provide uh, information about memory errors, about bus errors, about uh, CPU caches, and about the instruction fetch itself. Uh, there is one tool on this space called MCA log that records those information that allows you to decode that information and to detect what is happening, provided that the error doesn't crash the machine. Because if it crashes, the user space tool won't be called and there is nothing that can be done. Uh, the thing is, uh, the interface between the kernel and the MCA log is based on a very uh, weird API. Basically, what uh, the kernel exposes to user space are the values of some hashes inside the CPU, special hashes for MCA. Uh, and it's up to the user space to decode that information uh, and the decode depends on what CPU model, what CPU step, and uh, the MC log needs to know everything about that specific CPU model, so it needs to be decoded on the same machine as the error occurs, otherwise you may not be able to get the proper error. Uh, Another feature that were added on uh, the Linux kernel is called IDEC. IDEC basically uh, does hardware detection on memory and uh, PCI uh, buses. Uh, PCI ones are really old hardware, newer hardware don't have IDEC support for PCI, only for memories. Uh, and the thing is, the uh, interface for IDEC, it is a more upper layer. It passes the information about what DIM or what DIM parts that were affected by uh, some troubles. Uh, both uh, MCA and IDEC have a trace interface too. It provides interface via uh, traces, scanner traces. And uh, this interface is very interesting, and I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, next slides. Uh, in the case of IDEC, even if uh, the, cra the, the memory error is fatal with the crash machine, as the decoding of the error occurs inside the kernel, 
it provides a consistent information to the space when the machine crashes. So the space can know that uh, a certain D memory had a problem and maybe it's time to replace that memory by another one. Uh, there is one detail on the EDEC is that on most cases we are talking directly with the memory controller, uh, but newer systems and a few uh, weird architectures uh, don't allow you to access directly the hardware. So you need to talk with the BIOS, and the BIOS will then report the error, is what we call firmware first. Uh, a very recent addition to those harsh capabilities uh, started uh, on PCIe errors. These were added uh, about uh, six months ago. So right now, you may also get errors on Linux from PCIe uh, errors via traces events. Uh, this way, you can also detect uh, when the bus is not working, when the, the communication between the, 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 the main board and the, the, the PCI device is not fine, maybe bad contacts, and you can actually work proactively to improve that things. Uh, PCIe is able to correct the errors too. So even if the device is working, actually working, you may have troubles there, and it may, need, may mean that you need to replace that hardware on some time, or going down and check the contents and things like that. Uh, the thing is, we have those features inside the kernel, but when looking on the other side, uh, there are very, very few user space applications actually getting those informations and uh, doing something useful of that. Uh, there were basically two tools before uh, three months ago, which is the MCA log, two open source tools. Uh, MCA log focused only on uh, Intel MCA type of errors. And there is the EDEC tools, that it is the complementary part of uh, the uh, of the uh, EDEC kernel support, and that works with the dim label uh, types of errors. Uh, with that situation uh, in mind, uh, I decided to create another tool that can consolidate all those sorts of errors inside just one tool and provide one consistent way of getting those errors out of the system, which is the RAS daemon. So the RAS daemon, it collects the errors from all those three subsystems, uh, MCA, EDEC, and PCIe uh, AR subsystems. Uh, it gets those information together via traces events. So it connects, it hooks inside the kernel tracing uh, subsystem we start to listen to what is happening there, and depending on what happens, it reports, it logs on a database, uh, it allows you to have a, a persistent uh, storage for those errors, and you can later analyze and use uh, whatever you need to detect when you are, it is time to do some intervention on that machine. We also worked on adding newer features to improve this, the, those supports inside the kernel. And uh, the Hasimo is able to use all those features that are very neat, very nice. So looking what happened inside the kernel, uh, on 3.6.2, sorry, what we had basically there were the DEX subsystem, uh, but the, the only thing that the DEX subsystems does on that time is to write things at the message. So you need to take a look on that and see at syslog if something bad happened. Uh, also, 
the way the deck worked on that time is basically what, what, what you call rank. Let me explain a little bit more about that. This is how the memory works in practice. Uh, we have a matrix of uh, rows and columns where the data is stored. Uh, uh, those uh, cells are grouped on uh, banks, and those banks uh, are joined together what, in what we call rank. So the memory has uh, one, typically a DIM has just one rank. Uh, when people start to need more and more and more runs, uh, what people started to do is to, they started to use the two faces of the DIM chip, the, the DIM. In one face, they put one rank, in the other face, other rank. That's called uh, uh, dual-sided uh, dual DIMs. Uh, and right now, we have even uh, some DIMs that have four ranks inside. Well, the subsystem on that time, the DAC subsystem, were rank-based. Well, I cannot replace just one rank. If the DIM fails, I, want to, I need to replace the entire DIM. If it has two or four ranks, all four ranks will be replaced. But even so, the system identifies rank by rank. And it's not easy to associate on what physical DIM the rank is inside. That's one of the troubles on the DAX subsystem back to 3.6.32. Uh, the MCA, MCA log also had its own crappy interface that basically passes registers to user space. And all the decoding, decoding of the, the error were done on user space only. Uh, <clears throat> on kernel 3, uh, do, 2.6.32, we actually added support there for the kernel tracing on MCA, but there is no true, there were no tool to use those trace events. So it's there, but nobody uses because there's no user space counterpart. Well, on kernel uh, 3.5, we rewrote the entire IDEX subsystem in order to allow it to support those new types of uh, architectures that started on uh, Intel chips. Uh, and then we can now see DIM by DIM and not rank by rank, depending on the memory controller. And we also added there the same kind of support that were already in the MCA, which is the trace events uh, mechanism. This is just an ancillary slide to show wh what changes between the original uh, versions of IDEC to the modern systems. Uh, originally, the PC were just like uh, the upper picture there. We have a south bridge and north bridge. The, in CPU, the memory were connected directly to the north bridge. On most cases, I were not able to get any information from that. Then uh, we started to add a memory controller chipset in, uh, outside the memory bridge, or in some cases inside the, the, the north bridge. And uh, we start to have some control about the error correction mechanisms inside the, the DIMMs. Uh, and on modern architectures, the entire not uh went inside the CPU, and that's what we have right now on uh, uh, Nihalen, on Sandbridge, on Huntwell, on those new architectures, on ARM64. Uh, there are some uh, special kinds of uh, big machines with lots of CPUs that also has an, an ancillary chip for, uh, that talks with the memory is called SMB. <clears throat> One 
Well, on kernel 3.9, we also add a new driver inside the kernel for covering those cases where we cannot talk with the North Bridge or with the memory controller because you may have other chips inside, you may have SMBs, or maybe the hardware is just talking directly with the, the memory controller, and if you try to do it at the same time, we will race with the BIOS. So we need, we need to add this kind of drivers that goes to the BIOS, the BIOS and the BIOS will then provide us the information about uh, uh, the errors. We also added there the, the trace, trace events for PCIe, IE error. And then finally on kernel 3.10, we added a new series of useful features for the RAS events. Uh, basically, we changed a lot inside the tracing facilities. Uh, before kernel 3.10, if we open a trace event device nodes, we need to be polling it every time because I cannot, uh, for example, call read and wait for the data to be there. There's some issues inside the subsystem, the kernel, that didn't allow this kind of things. So we had to be polling constantly. That consumes power. That uh, makes the CPU uh, spending uh, cycles. That's not a good solution. So we added inside the kernel a way to, for us to wait for an event to happen instead of needing to polling it every time. Uh, we also allowed the trace event interface to be used by more than one application. If you are using any kernel before 3.10, if you are using the trace interface, nobody else can use it because there is just one pipeline. So if you, set, if you change the configuration of that pipeline, all other applications would be affected. After kernel 3.10, I can create a special pipeline just for monitoring the hash events. Another problem that used to have before kernel 3.10 is, is related with the timestamps of the events. They use the, 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 all the trace interface were originally added for measuring the performance of applications, the performance of the kernel. So it, is, it has very high precise timestamps there, but they are not referenced to the system uh, clock. I cannot uh, associate that information with this, the timestamp, for example, the system timestamp. Starting on kernel 3.10, we added inside the, RAS, uh, the, the, the tracing feature a way to associate that with the system uptime, and I can then associate with the uh, timestamp of the machine. The Hasimon 2 can use all those features that are provided by those subsystems. Okay, let me go into a, mirror, more, a little more detail about the firmware fees first and the hardware first. As I said before, uh, on several cases I can go directly inside the memory controller and get information there. What happens nowadays is that BIOS manufacturers are very uh, lazy on uh, uh, changing the BIOS information between two similar systems. So maybe uh, I may have two systems that are, look similar. The motherboard layout is a little different. Uh, they use the same BIOS, but in the number of DIMMs are different. The numbers of the DIMM uh, sockets are different. The, that information that it is stored inside the BIOS are the same, even though. So the BIOS is not reliable enough. So the decision when people start the DEX system were to go directly inside the hardware because there I know that information it is 100% fine. Uh, it's also faster because I'm going directly inside the hardware. Uh, 
And, uh, but the thing is, there are some systems that the BIOS also are reading information from memory controllers. And the hashers that are used to store the error information, uh, when I read information from that hasher, the hasher is cleared. It's cleared on reads. So if the BIOS and the operational systems are trying to read the same information from the, from the, the memory controller, either the BIOS or the operational system will get information. Worse than that, one will, interf will interfere in the order because I may read part of the information here, then I got interpreted by the BIOS, the BIOS will read another register, so I won't have the information perfect here, neither the BIOS will have, so the error will be lost. So on the systems where the BIOS are directly talking with the memory controller, I need to shut down that interface via the hardware, and I need to rely on the BIOS to get information. That's what happens uh, with lots of vendors. They have their own proprietary mechanism to get their information, and those interfere with the kernel. <coughs> uh, on the other hand, the information provided by the BIOS right now is generally incomplete. Uh, on several cases, you cannot track to a single DIM because the BIOS don't, don't provide that information. So it is a trade-off between the, 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 those two. Uh, that's why we have the two approaches inside the, the kernel. Okay, with that in mind, uh, we started with the new tool, which is the Hazimun. Uh, it's currently available on Fedora since Fedora 18. Uh, we expect it to be also used by other distributions, but it will take some time. Uh, that tool has only two months, so it is very brand new. Uh, it basically it hooks inside the kernel trace events. It creates its own event there, and it waits for some error to occur. When the error occurs, uh, the tool reports it to the space. It also allows to associate the labels that are printed inside the main, the main boards with their addresses inside the memory controller. And uh, there are also uh, some neat thing, the tools inside in order to test the subsystem and to test the, the tool itself. Uh, this is an example of uh, a kernel 3.10 running on a SunBreeze machine, uh, this specific machine. This machine has only uh, two uh, dual rank DIMMs, uh, each with eight gigabits of memory. So if I call uh, RAS, uh, this tool for the RAS DIMM, or RAS MC control, and ask for the layout, it will print that information. Basically, what's staying, saying here is that at channel zero, is lot zero, I have one DIMM at the first CPU, memory controller zero, in this case, it's first CPU. And on the second CPU, I have just one DIMM uh, memory inside uh, the channel zero, is lot zero. That's what I have physically on my machine. Uh, I can also check how the kernel knows uh, the, the label information about that memory. I can use the print labels. I'm not sure if this is visible. Uh, and it will show, uh, in this case, it doesn't know the name yet. So it will just so show the same information that I had. CPU 0, CPU 1, uh, channel 0, DIN 0. That's information it will provide. But then I can read that information from a special file using the hash labels. It will read the information from that file. And if I call it again, it will now provide me the real information, DIM A1, DIM B1, 
that was said inside my motherboard. So if an error occurs on one of those DIMMs, I'm able to tell on what DIMM the error actually occurred. That's what I'm doing here. I here I started the, that tool, and I used the fake injection tool in order to emulate that a hardware error occurred on that machine. In this case, I have two correct errors that were fakely generated. The first one at DIM A1, A1, the second one at DIM B1. Here's the location. Memory controller zero, uh, slot zero, uh, DIM zero of that memory controller. Uh, I can, of course, generate a summary of the errors. And as all those errors are stored inside uh, a database, I can later do more uh, statistics and more things inside that. Uh, we are right now in the phases of adding new features inside the Hasdemon. Uh, we are negotiating with uh, uh, Intel and other companies in order to add uh, some engineers there in order to improve the analysis and provide something more uh, helpful for user space. Uh, as I said before, this tool is brand new. Uh, we are wanting help and we are wanting uh, to add more features, so feel free to send us contributions, uh, suggestions, so on, that we can improve the tool and make it better for everyone. Uh, that's what I'm, I, I have prepared for this presentation, so I'm now open for questions. I would like that, I, 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 I would prefer if you could make the, the questions inside the microphone. We have one microphone there. So questions, doubts, complaints? Yes? Okay, uh, let me re try to repeat the, the question. Uh, he's asking uh, about what kind of uh, troubles that may happen on kernels before 3.10. If I use this tool, what other software that could be interfered by the Hasimon? Well, what happens is that uh, uh, currently uh, the uh, trace interface is only uh, it is there on the system, but it's not actually used by any other tool, except if you, for example, want to measure the performance of one application. So if you, for example, try to run perf, perf will open the trace interface, and it will change the things there. It will reconfigure the events that are being tracked, uh, and it, it will also read those events using the same device node as the Hasimo. So if the Hasimo is running, uh, Perf will interfere on that because it will change the things that are being monitored. So that's why you cannot use Perf if you are running your Hasimo on those machines. After kernel 3.10, we create a new uh, instance and in thesis, the Perf will, uh, it will not use the new instance to use the general one, and so it won't interfere. Okay. Yes? So part of the problem here is that the, the RAS events that you're looking for hopefully happen quite rarely. <coughs> and it's also, it, it seems at the moment that the current state of the art makes it very difficult to test and certify an arbitrary hardware platform that an end user would want to use. Prove that it does the right thing when all of the different types of errors could occur. What, what, what's being done 
Mm, let me see if I understood your question. You are asking uh, what method I've been taking for uh, to allow uh, someone to evaluate if the new system are actually providing the right uh, error reports, right? Uh, this is uh, something that uh, we, we didn't actually address. This is something that uh, would require to have uh, some sort of hardware error injection. Uh, actually, in the case of Intel, for example, we, all, we worked together with Intel on some uh, drivers for them to double check using their hardware error generator tools provide this kind of information. One thing that I've been added uh, recently on Intel machines, but this may be disabled by the BIOS, is what we call error injection, injection features. Uh, Intel modern CPUs are able to inject errors inside. And uh, if you are injecting the error, it will inject just like if the error started from uh, uh, the device itself. So with this kind of features, you can actually uh, get a very, very precise way of the error would be produ produced by the hardware itself. So if that feature is enabled on your BIOS, uh, you can actually test the end-to-end -end error detection solution. But as I said before, uh, most uh, BIOS vendors disable that features inside their BIOS. So you may need to ask them to open, the, to put the BIOS on developer mode for you to be able to enable that feature and do, do that, uh, that sort of uh, uh, testing. Yes? How long it take to run the, the tools? Uh, the idea is to let it run uh, since the, 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 the boot time. So it, will, it won't be consuming CPU because it will be just waiting for those specific hardware error events. So if the hardware is not, uh, if the hardware is okay, it should not be consuming any anything but just a few uh, memory spaces because it will be running there all the time. But you start it at the beginning, the tool will be running all the time, so it starts really fast. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.